So here's how I beat my Broadway panic attacks. So when I was a little kid, I started doing musical theater. And there's a story that my mom loves to tell people, which is when I was, I think I was about seven years old or something like that, and I did a production of Annie, and I played Molly, the littlest of the orphans. And my mom tells the story that she asked me, well, honey, aren't you scared with all those you know, people around you? And I said, no, mommy, I have butterflies in my stomach and I love that feeling. And she has to this day always quoted it, but nothing could be further from the truth these days. I have always struggled with having like pretty much panic attacks when it comes to performing live. It's why I don't do more theater. It's why I don't perform more. It's why I don't sing more. It's really a huge fear that has controlled me for a long time. And only recently I've decided that it's something that I don't want as a part of my life anymore. I don't want this fear sort of controlling part of my life. A lot of people hate public speaking and I completely understand why. You get up on stage, it's black there, and there's people, or if you can see the faces, even worse, because then you see them and you're reading them and you're doing your thing and then you're seeing whether or not they like your thing and whether you're vibing and it's tough. Oh my God, look, I'm getting anxious just thinking about it. I used to think that if I just focused on the work, really just focused on being present in the moment and taking in my co-stars, that sort of anxiety would go away. So case in point, I was 19. I did Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. Broadway is an extremely physically taxing job. The people that work in the ensembles that dedicate their lives to understudy roles and being dancers and, and all that stuff, like that's a tremendous amount of work. They hope to have those jobs for a long time, which means the wear and tear on their bodies is so extreme over the years. I mean, think about the Rockettes and like just anybody. So we had people that were in the Beauty and the Beast show since it opened and it was like open for 10 years when I had been on it. These people are really tired and it shows in their bodies, they have injuries, they have to go see people. I was doing the show at 19 years old and I was really rough. I went to a acupuncture person, I went to an acupressure person to work on my, like literally my throat. My larynx would be pulled up so high from belting and some of it I belted incorrectly so it would get jacked up. She'd have to massage my larynx down. You know, I had a really extreme surgery right before I started Beauty and the Beast. I had nodules, double nodules. It was the same surgery that left Julie Andrews without a voice completely because the person nicked her and that was it. So I had the surgery, it was successful, and my first audition for Beauty and the Beast, I did not get. I came back because I basically had somebody that was a company manager that I believe advocated for me internally. His name is Ken. And send him all my love, but I was basically pushed into another audition and because my relationship with Disney was still very vibrant, it was like, hey, let's give her another try. She was post-op and I said, guys, you gotta give me a shot. And I was able to hit the notes because before that, I was just like tense and you know, I had just come out of being in college where I was smoking, drinking, late nights, like I wasn't at my best performance. What is hard about being a singer too is that the more I sang, the more issues I feel like I had. I don't know if it was psychosomatic or what, but like I'd have more acid reflux, I would get more tonsillitis, I would get more problems just with my throat the more I sang. I just hated having to do inhalers and inhaler treatments and sometimes like steroids were in the inhaler treatments so that I could just make it through eight shows a week. Because for me, doing eight shows a week meant that I was doing my job at 100% and that I deserved to be there. I had a lot of criticism because I was so young and because people knew me mostly as a TV personality and an actor and it made me work super duper hard. I wanted everyone in the crew to like me, everyone in the cast to like me. I tried really hard to stay for every single person that came to the stage door. I just really wanted to connect in a way that made me feel like the star of the show. I wanted to project that and I probably tried way too hard and I, I was burning out, you know? I still dealt with this panic attack stuff. Like I still dealt with being on stage and I still had butterflies, but now the butterflies turned into more like pterodactyls <laughs> and it didn't feel good, you know? Like I felt like I really didn't belong and that there was so much riding on me having a perfect performance every single time because I will tell you that the people that are on Broadway are going to have a perfect performance 90% of the time. Maybe they don't think it, but I mean, they're really talented. 
And if you're going to be on Broadway, you better have your A game. I know that because I grew up with talented, talented people, hearing them like riff and do like amazing songs, like it was nothing. <laughs> That's amazing that that talent is out there. There is so much talent that is not even being seen in the Broadway community. They're not even being casted. It's amazing because like now you can actually see people perform on TikTok and stuff like that. And there's a part of me that would like to do things that don't require live performance, but at the same time, you have to start to face your fears at some point. So that is where I am at with this. I want to become a stronger me. I am putting out my vulnerabilities and I'm knowing that people have opinions and knowing that people comment on the littlest things from what I'm wearing to what I sound like versus what Katy Perry sounds like on a soundtrack or whatever it is. And it's all good. You know what I mean? Because I think at the end of the day, I'm the only person that has to be happy with my performance. I have so much respect for the Broadway community. I want to get back there. I really, really do. I don't even know if they're interested in having me, but know this, I'm willing to do the work. And sometimes when it comes to your desire, if you actually desire to be the best performer that you can be, you, you will be that. And that's what I think I love the most about theater is that it is live and that there is so much consistent mental preparation that comes along performance. I mean, it's funny because my husband, he's like this punk rocker and he used to go and he loves, loves performing live. And we talk about this all the time. I'm like, you really love performing live, huh? Gosh, I really just, it sits really hard in my stomach and I get anxiety and I just, I can't deal. Oh, so much so, by the way, that when I was doing Beauty and the Beast, I couldn't do anything. I was terrified that my voice was gonna go out on me. I literally couldn't, I slept with humidifiers and like I said, I had like three people working on my body so that throughout the week I could, I could be at best performance level or so I had hoped. I was doing voice classes. I would, I would basically not have any kind of social life. And that was another reason I felt really isolated. I felt really lonely. There are plenty of live theater actors that have normal lives, but I think they could even understand. When you're working, you have to be at the stage door, you have to be like ready to perform, you have to give all of your energy for two hours. And then after that, you get to go home, you get to relax, and you don't really need to wake up until the next day, or if you have a two show day, it's different. It takes a lot of guts for somebody to stand up and sing their song. That's their passion. I mean, they, they live and they breathe, and they don't get paid much money, by the way. People in theater are doing it because they love it, and because it is what they want to do. Fully knowing that, you know, they can't necessarily just break away from theater. Once you're in theater, it's not the easiest thing to do to transition into like movies. It's strange to me why people don't respect musical theater or theater actors more. They are the best actors to hit their marks, know their lines the first time around. They're super time efficient, very professional. You know, they're competitive with themselves. They're gonna give you the best performance every single time. They're really great. They're really well trained. In fact, being musical theater trained as a child is I think what has given me a leg up in any of my time on set. So when you're thinking about performers, do me a favor because I am gonna try to get back into this. What I would really love to feel from people isn't negative comments about a person's performance because we've all seen bad performances from live actors. They're not having a good day or they made a mistake or they forgot their line, they're out of the pocket. Just have love for the actors when you go see theater. I'm gonna do that even more. I haven't really gone back to theater because I think a part of me is fearful watching it too. My husband, who's been a, a live performer his whole life, he says that he doesn't like musical theater, but I know it's not because he doesn't like it. It's because he says he gets so much anxiety that somebody, as a sitting person, is going to mess up. And it's funny because he and I would just not be a good mix. He still hasn't seen me perform yet, and we have to change that. I want my kids to know that mommy can perform live. That's something that I want to, to be a legacy for me. I wanted to talk quickly about mental health as well in the Broadway community. Recently, you know, I started very young and when I was eight, I was in a show called The Will Rogers Follies. Sutton Foster was 17 years old and she was like the light of my life. She was my big sister, but you know, she was rolled out on a stretcher, you know, and I saw it at eight years old and I was like, where's my friend going? And I never saw her again. Cut to me being in Beauty and the Beast, having my own panic attacks, seeing her perform live like a boss. And she has always been an inspiration to me. 
I, I hope that I can get back on stage and even at an older age, approach musical theater in a way that can fit me. If you have a dream, don't be fearful of it. Use your adversity, your anxiety, and identify it as a positive. This is excitement. This is passion. This is enthusiasm. And go for it. Because I think I'm going to go for it. Thank you.